Hello and welcome to another instalment of my Python for Beginners series. This one is going to bring all our learning up to this point together. It's the finale for our Python for Beginners. I'm going to start with a very basic program. In the meantime, we'll have a look at what we've already covered because we've already done print statements. We've already done taking input. We've done selection with if, else and elif. We've done looping with while and for loops and we've done logic with and or and not gates. OK, so let's have a look at this first program. We're going to ask the user of five for a name five times and then print out the results. We'll stick a breakpoint in and run that into the console. So we've stopped it here and we remember this will just start from zero because we haven't set it and it's going to stop before we hit five. So it will be zero, one, two, three and four. And if I step in, number is currently equal to zero. We're going to take an input from the user. We're going to assign the result of that input. And we're going to append that result into the list stored in list name. So we've got an empty list here that's assigned to list names and we're going to append the value of the user input to that list. So you think name app step in ask for another name Chris see so that was number one this time number will be two do it again. Then step in, step in. Mean step in, step in. Step in, and that was the last one because we've done our four zero one two three four. Sorry, five, but yeah. Then we step in again and we just output and we print the list. Now I can expand that if I want to, just to show all the different points. I can say declare the list here or the variable here. I can assign the list to it afterwards. Again, I can create a variable there or declare it. I can declare then assign a user input to it. So that stores a string in here. There's a list in this one. And then in this line, we append the contents of user input to the list that is in the variable list names. And then at the end, we just print the contents of list names. So what about continuous user input? Let's have a look. In this case, we're going to ask the user a name. We can add that name to a list, and then we're going to ask them if they want to provide more names. And we're going to keep adding more names to the list for as long as they say yes or why. So look at the code. Pretty similar. We've got a variable called list names. We're assigning an empty list. We're creating a variable called bull take names and we're assigning a boolean value true to it we're printing a message and then we're jumping into the while loop so while bull take names now remember that that is exactly the same as me typing equivalent to true i just don't need that bit there and then we're going to append to it an input that we take from the user just like in the last one, that is, we're then going to recheck the Boolean. So we're going to regenerate this value. And we're saying that we're going to take an input from the user. If the result of the user input is ex equivalent to or exactly the same as a lowercase y, we're going to loop back around to the top. Once the 
If it's not, we're going to exit the loop and we'll run the print statement. So let's debug that and step in. There to be in the console. So we've done the print statement. We've got the empty list. We've got the Boolean true. Done the print statement. That's true. So it's stepped into the while loop. And now we're going to be asked to enter a name. Uh, let's try something. Let's go for the Z. So this time, like, it's going to ask us for the user input first, and then it's going to compare that user input to see if it's that and create a Boolean value. Enter another name. I'm going to type Y. It's come back up here. The Boolean was set to true. It's the same one that's here, so we're going to step in again because it's true. That's goes for another name. <coughs> Brown. Same as before, I'm going to ask us again. This time I'm going to press N. Now it doesn't have to be N, so long as it isn't a lowercase y, any other value will exit the loop because this now becomes false. So we won't step in as we go back to the top of the loop. We step out to the loop and we run the print. Okay, so we're going to do something similar. But first, let's look at expanding that code. Pretty similar to the expansion you saw the first time. We're declaring the variable, we're assigning the variable with an empty list, we're declaring the variable, we're assigning the value of boolean true. In here, we didn't have to declare a variable before, but we can see that we're declaring a variable, we're assigning a user input, we're then appending user input rather than having it sat in here, declaring a new variable, we're assigning user input to it, and then we're checking whether the contents of the variable is equal to y. It's all the same. It's just broken down. By all means, play around with that. Have a go with it. It will work in exactly the same way. Now, what if we wanted to have multiple lists? And we wanted to do a selection inside the loop. We can do that. So in this case, when we take a user input, we're also going to take an age and then we're going to filter those ages. And we can say if the age is less than four, we're going to come here and then we'll check if it that's fine. If it is less than four, we'll drop down here. If it's not, we'll check this one. If it's there, fine, we'll do that, then we'll drop down. If it's not, we'll check this and do that one if it is, and then we come to that last. So we now have if, elif, and else blocks nested inside our while loop. So the while loop is indented, and each of these if, elif, and else blocks are indented again. Okay. Now this is called nested. So these statements here are nested inside the while loop. Let's stick a breakpoint in and run the code. So we've got, that's true. So I'll step in, input name, please enter name. Chris, step in again, enter Chris's age, let's make Chris 1, so when we come to here, if input age is less than 4, 1 is less than 4, so that will come in here, and we'll append the value of input name to the preschool list, so we can see that's gone in there. It's then going to run this, so we're going to take the user input first and then we'll assess it to see if it's equal to y. Yes. That 
was true. So when we loop back up here, this is true. We'll step in and we'll go again. Ask for a name. Sam. Step in again, ask for Sam's age. Let's make Sam six. This time, we'll skip this one because the input age is not less than four. Input age was six. Or I should mention that just casts our string input to an integer like we saw previously in other videos or other tutorials. We come down to this one. Six is less than 19, so we'll step into this one because that will equate to true. We'll append it so that Sam's now up there. Do we want to input another input? Yes, we do. Because it's going to be true, we'll step in again, enter a name. Let's try Lisa. Um, we've already got a school age, so let's make it Lisa 30. <coughs> no, not that one, not that one, but she is Lisa is still less than 65, so we'll come in here and we'll add to that. So take the yes no again, enter that, yes. Let's try a Ben. Let's make Ben's age seven. No, we're not less than four. We're not less than 19. We're not less than 65. So we're coming to the else block, which is everybody else. And this time we're to pension age. This time I'm going to say no, although I could just show you, I could type in no. This is now false. So when I step in, it'll drop down here, print, 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 print. And I could have kept going with that and it would have appended them to the end of each of the lists respectively, depending on what age I entered. Right, so let's have a look in here. We're going to add one more list. So what we're going to do this time, we're going to add any pensioners that are the, have the name Mark to both this list and to this list. And to do that, we're going to add just one more if statement. So inside the else, if. Oops, input name equal to mark list pension mark dot pen input name. Let's see that one in action. So I'm going to dump a breakpoint there. Enter name. Emma, enter Emma's age. Let's make sure that we're old enough. So Emma is going to be 80. Add another name. Yes. Enter a name. Oh, you know what I haven't done, don't you? In fact, I haven't got that in there either. I'll have to fix that. What we should have is a print the mark list plus pension mark.
and enter Emma, enter Emma at age is six, seven, make sure she's pension age. So we've come into the else, we're going to add to the pension age as before. This will equate to false, so it will skip that and we'll come around to the building. Enter another name, yes. So we can continue, just continue. Enter a name, Mark, this time. Enter Mark's age, let's make Mark 90. So we've hit the else, we're going to add it to the pension age. So we've got Emma and Mark in the first list. This one this time equate to true, so we're also going to add Mark to this list. I'm going to say no to adding any more because I've done enough in a good example. Loop exits and we do all the print statements. Okay. What about if we didn't want them Mark to go into the main list? We just wanted Mark to go into his own list. Well, there's a couple of ways we could do that. I could add an else, an else statement here. And then move this into here. So if I run that this time, please enter a name. Emma. Emma is 90. Add another name. Yes. Interesting. Oh, I've put the break button in the wrong place, but you're still going to see the effect. Mark, enter Mark's age, 89. Add another name, no. So what we can see is though I didn't step through it like I intended to, because I left a gap there, we've got Emma in that one and Mark in that one. So adding another level of if else works, but it's certainly not the only way. We could also do this using some and logic without adding another level of nesting. So how do we do that? We could use an and and we can reverse some logic. So let's Delete that bit. Input age. Greater than or equal to 64. Gone up 65, sorry. And input name is equal to mark then this pension mark dot pend input name and then we would have an else because everybody else that was over 65 would then get covered in this one this pension a dot end and put that. So let's run that one. Double break point in. Please enter a name. Let's go for the same again. Emma, Emma is 90. So Ellen, input age greater than or equal to 65. So Emma will be that. But the name will not be, therefore, that's false. We come to the else and we do that one. We'll take name, going to put a yes. Continue, and then we're going to put a mark. We're going to make mark 78, which have marks old enough. This time, that will be true. And that will be true. Both of these will equate to true, so we'll drop into this one. 
will append to that one. And I'm going to tap no because I don't want to do that. And then continue. So, two different ways of, the, of sort of doing the same thing. One is using a logical and, one was using a nested if. There is a lot more that you can do at this point. The purpose of this video and this tutorial was to give you a taste of the kind of complications you can bring in, the things that you can deal with now. There is a lot more to learn in Python and programming in the whole. I will be doing more videos later to cover <coughs> taking this further, looking at randomness, looking at classes and other data structures. Before that though, I'm going to do a similar series of videos to the one we've got now in C Sharp and probably also C++. If you do have any comments, any thoughts, please feel free to post them. They are filtered. So I will not be allowing anything offensive, but if you've got any genuine questions, any genuine comments, please do either put them on the blog or on the YouTube video. Thank you. Bye.